Yeah, all right. So we can go ahead and move on to our splash screen and make sure that looks okay. Yes, all right. So, we doing some trivia today. We will, but we got we got into it. So, our first group, our first week we're going through two is we have Two Fact, Two Furious versus Four Pool Lifeguards. And now that I've reminded myself which group I'm going to cast, I will open up their folder in game. Let me see. All right. That's going to be Dead Infested versus Magic Bullet, uh, Elevation versus Cider, El Pinguino versus Vint, and Justice versus Tech. And, uh. I think they would assume. Um, yeah. We'll just go ahead and hop right into it. Our first game is going to be Magic Bullet versus Dead Infested in a TVZ. I do. Listen, when you go to Google Images and you just type in StarCraft wallpaper ass looking, like, it works. You get some good stuff. Alright. Um... Yeah. So we are going to open up into our first game. Uh, again, it's going to be a TVZ. Magic Bullet playing Terran. Dead Infested is our Zerg player. Make sure we're completely set up in here. Oh, let me... Starcraft wallpaper ass. Like <laughs> That's just, um, you get the um, Starcraft ghost image. Pop out chat. Uh, all right, so now chat should be coming up. Let me make sure. Hey, there it is. All right, so now the CPL coordinators can't get mad at me when I uh, say things that I see in chat. All right, in our game, we have in the bottom right corner, as the Grey Terran Squad. Magic Bullet. And in our bottom left corner, as the Teal Zerg, we have Nom Destroya, or Dead Infested. It's a Nom v Nom Civil War. After the chat, I'm going to help you set up that much cooler Streamlabs chat widget, please. I've been meaning to like look into and in doing that, but I I work and I get home and I go to sleep and that's my life. I we 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 found the cringe that Dead Infested was referring to. to. <laughs> we found it. It is the five pool opening from Dead Infested. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, on Magic Bullet's side, we have a supply depot going up, but that won't that won't fight Zerglings. Um, huh? So there's enough. So that's an interesting thing. Like, there's enough minerals when you do a five pull to be able to build two extra drones before it finishes. Um, I wonder if the larva actually resupplies fast enough to um, get that correct, to like be able to set that up correctly. So that's really interesting. Um, I would almost say, and is this in the right order? It is in the right order, I think. It was the first replay in the group. Um, oh no, and the Overlord still hasn't scouted the Terran, so the Zerglings are going to be all the way on the other side of the map. But yeah, I feel like um, you could fit in like two or three extra drones, like Light Swarm in chat is saying that they should be up to six drones. Um, yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, uh, for Dead Infested, their Overlord wasn't quite fast enough. He was a very slow Overlord. He scouted in the correct position, but like just was not given enough time. He actually even veers off, so I don't 
yeah, unless Dead Infest was paying attention, he didn't even scout the Terran main. And this is giving uh, Magic Bullet plenty of time to be able to block the ramp. He'll have two Marines out. Yeah, that's, um, I think that should be... I mean, well, it might not be game, of course, right? Because Magic Bullet still needs to go and kill Dead Infested, but at the very least, uh, Magic Bullet isn't getting busted here. Um, and in a game like this, that basically is game over. We have three more pairs of Zerglings spawning, so Dead Infested isn't even trying to bait this into... Oh, there's actually a hole in the SCV count. So the Zerglings are actually going to be able to come in and get on top of the Marines. But a uh, bit of a miss. Not great micro here from the Zerglings. They only just barely get on top of the uh, Marines. And yeah, they will get taken out. If these other six Zerglings rally over, the ramp is... Well, it was undefended for a moment. Um. So yeah bunker going down on the ramp and that basically will be the end of the uh, push there so once you have that bunker set up it's impossible to actually fight the marines um, so bunker sets up marines get inside it and now the uh, Zerglings will get completely taken out I suppose it is just gonna be a matter of magic bullet building up army and then going and killing their opponent. <laughs> um, again, we have a, well, we had a hatchery being built. Um, but on five drones taking your second hatchery, it's not great. Um, yeah, I mean, the game is basically over. Like, a good timing attack here from Magic Bullet, which is what they're setting up for with the stim tech. Uh, they'll be able to get some marines and some medics and mix in with their army and we'll be able to just push in and take out our zerg hero player. SCVs are able to get back to mining. There's 21 SCVs, the 6 drones, and that can give a, a good indicator of where we're at in this game. Wasn't first but butter first map in week six? I don't remember. Um, and also, uh, this was the first replay in the group. So uh, blame the CPL website. I am just a humble caster. And that makes me infallible. I don't know, I might have, I might have picked, picked the wrong replay. CPU players not know. Yeah. All right, and there's there's this push I was uh talking about. This one marine. He's he was slow to getting his armor on, but he he'll, he'll catch up. Big push, fire bat. Well, was trying to get on top, but that was a lot of good spread damage there. Um, the Zerglings will all fall. I mean, they trade pretty well, though. That was a good engagement from Dead Infested. And in any other game, that might have been worth it, but yeah, this is not the game where it's worth it. Drones coming down to fight Marines. Uh, the Sunken Call. Sunken Colony was not targeted down, but you should be able to. Zerglings are... What? Really great micro here from Dead Infested. Actually, I mean, honestly, I mean, the second round, this is enough to kill the base, but to actually hold on through that fight was really good. Now, I just have to be careful around these fire bats. Um, oh, okay, so he defends that as well. Uh, so behind this, Dead Infested is probably going to try the drone up. Magic Bullet, meanwhile, floating a lot of resources, adding on those extra barracks. Um, and it's just going to keep rallying units over. That's, um... Huh, yeah, I mean, if, if Dead Infested can take, like, ten more fights like that, this is a... this will be an even game. 
setting up their sunken colonies to defend against the bio push, so that's pretty good. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. He just needs to take like 15 more good trades like that, uh, and then it'll be fine. He's slowly building his workers back up, and I mean, Magic Bullet isn't exactly. Uh, yeah, Magic Bullet isn't exactly uh, you know, worker heavy, right? Like their SCV count isn't being built up super well. Uh, we have a big push being developed here by Magic Bullet, but we already are going to have three sunken colonies, so that's going to be really hard for the bio to bust. And so uh, Deadfest is pretty safe just droning up uh, behind this. Scan goes down, sees that we're still on hatch tech. Um, yeah. So here comes the big push. This actually might be enough to break three sunken colonies. I'm not sure where the math is on that. Because all I know is like watching it, it feels like three sunken colonies can deal with an infinite amount of anything that isn't siege tanks or dragoons. Actually, even then, they can deal with a good number of dragoons. I guess a zealots. Right, there's the stem. There's the engage in. Marines getting taken out. Zerglings are going to come up and try to buffer. Good medic heals there. Basically keeping those Marines alive. Uh, push back a little bit to bait out the drones. Get all the drones. Get the hatcheries. And now this should be game. I don't think it's possible for Danfessa to build back up. GG, double GGs are called. And uh, Magic Bolt will take the set 1 0. Really good play by, uh, I mean, both players, right? Like, Karen defended that really well, but also Dead Infested had some pretty good defenses themselves. Alright, our second map is going to be Butter. At Simo, new nickname for Magic Bolt, the Clean Terran. Doesn't need drugs. The blind, he, he got stim. I don't. He, he, he might not be doing drugs, but those marines were stringed out of their minds. Is dead infested on two fact two furious? He dead infested is on two fact two furious. Wait a minute, what the fuck is Nablime cast? <laughs> I don't know Nablime. Let's go, let's go back into our next game, our Butter game. Here comes Dead Infested on the bottom right corner of Butter. Going to be as clean as possible. Uh, like a clean slice. Okay, I guess four pool. And then on the top right corner, we have Magic Bullet, our clean Terran. Wait, is Denfest on four pool lifeguards? Okay, I'd probably need to change my overlay then. Um, but down here we have more drones building. So Dead Infested is not doing the memes this game, but that drone just was like. He was scouting the perimeter, making sure there weren't any secret SCVs or uh, zealots. What is the what is the thing to do? With this? Okay, Art Alt W. Um, <laughs> and then in the top right corner, I will say though, um, warning to Light Swarm. Uh, if you donate to the nut, if you if you use your channel points for the blind cast, I can't guarantee that they will not just be wasted. Holy shit! Dead infested with the 10th 1000 APM. Every single drone is being manually controlled to mine these minerals. He's going like he's click. He's hitting that G button 
with the skill of a thousand uh, fucking flashes, manually clicking on each mineral line, mining all eight minerals themselves. So drone going out to scout, even though it's a two-player map, and the Overlord will get there eventually. Uh, ooh, really fast. So it is a 12 hatch here from our Zerg player. First time saying, oh, hello. Oh, hold on. Give me one second. I have to... Guys, did you know? You can buy fall... Oh. Who banned... All right, thank you, Nablime. <laughs> I forgot you had mod powers. <laughs> Held down hatch hockey was clicking. All right, so drone gets in the scout. Will we see the gas steal? Probably not. That's a that's a Protoss tactic. Um, but the SUV does get into the base. <laughs> Drone gets out pretty safely. All right. Well, it seems we're looking at a normal game, I guess. I was expecting more, uh, something fancier, but based on game one, it looks like both players are going to play more standard, or this is actually game one. And we're playing things out of order. SCV scares the Overlord into hiding above the cliff. Some Marines coming out. Zerglings. Uh, yeah, not a lot to not a lot to say. They're gonna chase around that SCV. Uh, all right, time for some some. Let's do some trivia to pass some time. What is the name of the Terran Marine attack. As these two, we have to do it quick before these two Zerglings get over there. We have one vote, Dada saying Gauss Rifle. Light Swarm is saying Weapon. Yeah, what is the Terran Marine, if I, when I hover over this, what is, what is gonna be the name? What is, what is gonna pop up? What? You didn't see that. All right. Place from saying Ghost Rifle. Mappy saying Ghost Rifle. Are you sure? You know they might be pulling one of those like Star Trek sci-fi, Star Wars sci-fi things where there's a specific number along with it. What if it's like the S64 Ghost Rifle? Alright. NCX saying C14. Plyme <laughs> is saying bullet. Six damage. Alright, let's see what this Marine, when he gets down to these sunken colonies, he's going to be shooting at them with his Gauss rifle. <laughs> but NCX gets uh, bonus points because that is actually the name of their, uh, of their gun. So... You get pity points. All right, here's the um, yeah. Based on what we're seeing in chat, it seems like, and what we're seeing in game right now, uh, Marines are a really good unit. So there's another stem. They back off, put damage on the drones, come back forward, uh, get, take out the sunken. Every single drone is going to die because Marine drones fighting Marines is uh bad all right uh sun colonies are going to try to come up in the main uh but they will get taken out as the marines just flood into the mineral line and focus fire down the drones all right 
little bit of a salt mind in the chat. And that means that Magic Bullet, with a clean defense and a clean offense, is going to take it 2-0 over... Actually, let me... Dead Infested, did you say you were on four pool lifeguards? I might need to relook at my overlay here. So Two Fact, Two Furious is on top. Four pool lifeguard. Okay, never mind. No, I don't. There we go. Uh, let me pull that chat back up. All right. Good clean games from, uh, I guess, Dead Infested, uh, at least. Uh, Magic. I mean, I'm sorry. From Magic Bullet. Uh, Again, really calm defense on that five pool, and then also a really good, just a really good timing push. Uh, so, yeah, like those timing pushes, it's really easy to look at those and be like, oh, lol, such an easy game, just build Marines five head. But it's like, uh, you actually have to have like pretty tight uh, macro to be able to hit those pushes so especially for tier 3 players I'll, I'll say that it's it can be impressive to watch those uh those games just because like even though they don't they don't exactly win or they don't they don't look super cool it's obvious when it's coming in it's like okay there they go subscribe with prime. holy shit Champions subscribe with their Amazon Prime for three months. Currently on a three-month streak. Champion 91. The biggest fan. Based. All right. <laughs> uh, our next match is going to be Slip It Insider versus Elevation in another Terran versus Zerg. This time... Actually, yeah, no. Two Fact, Two, Vir two Furious for the Terran versus the four pool lifeguards zerg player so this is i guess the very thematic matchup and i just started that matchup with that i just started that replay without thinking about it all right <laughs> in the top right corner of butter as the blue terran player we have slip it in cider playing for two fact two furious and in the bottom right corner we have elevation as our purple zerg swarm uh, <laughs> playing for the four pool lifeguards um, also elevation said have fun good luck which is definitely something champion saying wait I just saw how the score screen is structured can I refund played elevation um, you cannot refund Alright, so I guess we have a trivia. It looks like pretty... Wait, what is this SCV doing? Hold on, hold on. We might have a... There's no S Supply Depot. I was just building a wall. Alright. This is a, a new, a new fresh uh, realm. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just realized that I'm casting a Z, a, a, a cider TVZ. Um, I'm just gonna say, if you if you're if you're new to the if, if you're new to the CPL casts, I uh, I think I first casted one of these for the preseason, and it's one of the cider has like if I if I'm if I have the right person in mind, I might be mixing them up with somebody else because my brain does not work. But uh, it has they have one of the like coolest ZVT styles, at least for like tier three. So um, yeah. So we're, we're building up that hype here. Um, so As, as said earlier, what is... We're going to do some trivia because we do just have some standard play here. We have hatch into pool, and then we have a sort of wall being built up. So, for 50 imaginary smackaroon points, what is the name of the Zerg drone attack? What is it called? 
And you have to hurry quick before this marine chases this drone down and kills it. What is this drone specific attack? Dot is saying it's spines or something. Oh no. Oh no, better get your answers in quick. Can't you give us channel points? Sure. If I knew how to do that. <laughs> the plot. We have a, 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 a vote for grabby bits. Which honestly, I, I can believe. It's little grabby bits. Spits stuff. Alright, so the drone attack is... Since he's getting home and we're we have our little zerglings coming out, spines. <laughs> Dada was correct. The drone attack is just called spines. Um. Yep, is saying acid splash. No, it's just spines. Which again, like, it's part of this, like, StarCraft 1 thing where, like, you have these weird names for things that don't match at all. Like, spines, but it's clearly an acid attack. Or, like, um... Like, how the Hydra list is like, oh, it's like a needle spine, and it's also just an acid attack. Does the Hydra actually say acid spines? Hydra is grooved spines. Imagine if they took that literally. Like, the drone literally attacks with its spine. It just coughs it up on people. Like some sort of fucking grotesque monster. Like, its body becomes like a fucking pancake while it's attacking. It just kind of flaps about. <laughs> I'll get some... Zerglings up here, they're not really going to be able to get in and get any damage done, but they can keep the Terran honest. Trading one Zergling for a Marine is pretty good. <laughs> uh, and Elevation, getting the hidden hatchery at the Terran third to make it so that they can really try and reinforce their attack here. This is... I, it's bad, but it's very funny. Um, meanwhile, Cider go teching straight up into uh, air. Using a lot of uh, Zerglings in that push. Teching straight up into uh, Starport. Uh, Vulture does come out and it will be able to pick off this Zergling and get some scouting done. If these Marines move out of the way. Unfortunate, there are limits to what Terrans are capable of. Alright, the Marines do finally move so the Vulture can get out of there. Uh, missile turrets starting just as the Mutas are about halfway done. So that is very good for Cider, you know. They have that timing down, so that's really good. Um, and there's actually nothing here to defend these drones, so this vulture actually should be able to get at least two drone kills. Oh no, he's he's gonna be a scout. Ooh, nice micro there on the on the vulture, but he isn't quite. Mutas actually do not kill vultures very fast, but Cider is prioritizing the scout over the um, aggression because they want to make sure that they have their plan straight and so they're building up these extra missile turrets they saw all the mutalisks popping so they do know that elevation is more going for oh my god why extractor and two drones they'll never see it coming uh But we have a bunch of mutilists in the middle of the map now. And back in the Terran base, we have it. The Valkyrie. Being constructed. Cider has, like, this amazing fucking, like, Valkyrie-heavy uh, TVZ play. Where it is literally just like, oh hey, uh, I'm using these like Corsairs. And Mutas are going to dive right into the mineral line. They're going to get a lot of damage done on these SCVs, but that is a lot of missile turrets. And as the Valkyrie comes out, and the damage is going to get basically split across all these Mutalisks. And they are basically all going to trade. They don't even, I don't even think they got very many, um, uh, 
I don't think they even got that many SCV kills, and so I, I think it was, what, eight Mutalists dived in? They killed maybe three SCVs, and they come out with two that are going to not be able to fight again until for about like a minute for their recharge to um, uh, come back. But Elevation, meanwhile, is going up to three gas. So the Proxy Hatch three gas is an interesting play. It is also going to limit the Terran gas when they try to go to expand. Um, the only thing that makes this extremely risky is that Cider going this heavy airplay style, they're going to be slipping around the edges of the map, which means that you know there, there's a greater statistical chance, likelihood, that they will accidentally like fly a Valkyrie to try and angle around the map and scout this base. Um, but Elevation's throwing up their uh, creep colonies. Mutalist does get baited out and does get taken out. Um, yeah, behind this, Elevation is getting plus one armor. They have their Hydra Den, so we should be seeing a switch sometime. But there really isn't much here for Elevation, while Cider's building up sort of the army that they're most comfortable with. Uh, we do have a couple of Scourge coming out, and that is the correct decision or response to seeing a lot of Valkyrie production. Because Scourge, uh, it is two Scourge uh, with 110 damage to kill a Valkyrie. And uh, that will help the Mutalisks fight them and not just get murdered. Uh, Cider getting their siege tank mode. So this is the second phase of the Cider plan is to just then play TVT with mech while your Valkyrie are playing uh, PVZ. Play a lot of different matchups in this style. Uh, Elevation getting their fourth base at their third base, and they're continuing to drone up. 36 drones to 43 SCVs, but remember, like, Zerg can spread their drones out across multiple bases and be just as efficient, so uh, this number can be a little misleading in, in some of these matchups. Alright, tank setting up. Right, Queen's Nest coming down, so Elevation will be getting up into uh, Hive Tech here in just a moment, setting up the extra creep colonies at their main, at their natural. Um, yeah, and they're going to be retreating these overlords back home uh, in order to protect them. Uh, but once we get up to enough Valkyries, we're at six right now, two more in production. Once you get to that high Valkyrie count, they can really start. And Valkyries are crazy. They actually have way more durability than Corsairs, so that you can be a lot more aggressive with them. Uh, they can, like, actually dive over these bases, and as a Zerg, you really don't want to be spending your time getting those uh, Spore Colonies or going mass into Hydralisks because the Terran can just get tanks and those will shoot through Hydras insanely quickly. Uh, three Lurkers in production uh, somewhere on the map. Ah, right here. And there is the Valkyrie move out. They slip right past the Mutalisks, heading straight for the main, and they're going to start picking off Overlords, which is a problem for Elevation, because they're already supply blocked at 60. Um, there's two Overlords here, like, trying to retreat home. Uh, so we have the Overlord built, and it is immediately... Knocked down, the Valkyries are going to be searching for these Overlords. If, the, if they catch these two, that's going to be really bad. But that Overlord produces. Look how fast those suckers melt. Jesus Christ. One volley, and then they can just run away. And just melt through these. Yeah, Overlords are kind of Jesus Christ. Yeah, Valkyries are kind of nuts. Um, so that is... It looks like, I think, nine... Yeah, so... Ten Valkyries. Seems pretty good. Um, Elevation's gonna have to start hiding all their Overlords in their main base, but even then... Yeah, now the Valkyries are gonna fan out. And this is where it uh, gets really dicey for this base in particular. Um, especially since these tanks are gonna be moving forward. These Lurkers are gonna come up to try to get some kind of contain going, but it's not gonna happen. And so now, Cider has vision on this third base. Um, so yeah, Lurkers come up, try to get this contained, immediately get nuked out, 
Uh, they do burrow outside of vision, and there are no science vessels. But again, these Valkyries are just going to have free reign. This one Valkyrie has so many. Uh, but he does get called. It gets called with the control group. Uh, all the Mutalists just died, by the way. We missed a fight for three seconds, and they immediately all got murdered. Uh, three Overlords over here. Once again, supply blocked already in place for elevation, so every single Overlord that Cider picks off is like just a, a nuke to the tempo. Uh, Nablime says, hey, might want to fix your stream title. Okay. <laughs> is it say, is it still uh, last week's, or two weeks ago, actually? Okay, I'll fix that. Half fix. Fix it after this game. All right, here comes the big push, and then stage three of the cider plan is battle cruisers. Uh, it is tier three. If only if it was last week. Rip. So this uh, third base, yep, as soon as the tanks get in position, it will fall. Uh, these three overlords running to the corner to save themselves over this little tar pit monster. Uh, yep, lurkers get taken out. All these drones are going to die. I think that is going to be the how the noose slowly closes around elevation. Um, the Valkyries taking out basically everything that exists. And then we have double battle cruiser production in place to begin the final stage. Uh, three queens are out. I'm not sure what those are supposed to help with, but we have ultraless caverns completed as well. A huge gas bank from elevation. So I think that really shows how effective stealing this gas was. If we can get a scout on what... Um, on how much uh, those Zerglings are going in for a counterattack on the main, but we already have the army on route. We unfortunately aren't going to be able to see how much gas is left in that geyser. Um, third base for Cider getting put up on the, I guess, the normal third. I actually never know what how you're supposed to expand on this map. I guess this is supposed to be the normal third, but it's just weird. Um, yeah, and Elevation is just building a lot of Zerglings and rallying them around the map. Uh, Defiler's finally coming out, soon being researched. So if... if uh, the only problem is Dark Cloud, if we can get Dark Cloud out, Elevation can live for a long time, but Dark Cloud is not going to help these Overlords. And that is a lot of Valkyries looking for, for things to kill. Two kills on that one. Uh, one on this one. Yep. So all those... Yeah, there goes the overlords in the main. Uh, the Scourge are going to come down, try and clear it. Uh, it looks like they will get one Valkyrie, but there is so many overlords here in the natural that if um, uh, Cider turns up... Oop, they do catch... They catch the Queens. That's pretty big. They were hiding and trying to build up their... When was the last time you heard a queen death sound? Uh, <laughs> this one is going to sneak out though. Uh, so, But this base will fall. And then... Oh my god. Spawn broodlings. The mad lad. Uh, but the battle cruisers will come. And please, there's so many overlords here just begging to get taken out. I need to, I need to see the Valkyries shred this entire army. This entire supply. I have to see it. All those Scourge running back home. Please, 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 the Scourge are coming. They're right there. God, oh, Jesus Christ, Valkyries are insane. The attack on the Broodling itself. So here comes the big push. The Valkyries are going to be moving in to take out the Overlords. Let's see how fast they fall. Oh my god. 124 supply taken all the way down. 100. There goes 20 supply for free. Another 8 supply. The 
uh, battle cruisers are taking out the spore colonies. I need, come on, give me that volley. There's so many, there's six overlords right there. The cider! Cider! They're right there! Yes! No! <laughs> Don't let those battle cruisers get these kills! Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so fun to watch. There's a lot of Hydralis, but again, Siege Tank. Cider is gonna take game one. Wow, we actually have two Guardians being morphed, as well as some Devourers. I actually think, now, this may be a bad idea, but I actually think if you're going to fight face this, going like mass Air Zerg might be the play, right? You just get some Devourers, and then you engage with the Devourers, they tank a bunch of shots, and then the Mutalists clean up because of the Acid Spores. You know? That could be, uh, could be pretty good. Or you just run right into them. Yes. No. Yes. Uh, what a fun, what a fun unit. Yes. All right, maybe going air zerg is really bad. Oh, hey, we can see it. So yeah, Elevation was able to get about 2,000 extra gas from this base. That's pretty good. Oh, the Overlords are rallying to help fight. I think all of the Valkyries are... Oh no, the Valkyries are scouting. supply here for our, our third player. Looks like the Valkyrie. Oh, just barely. If it goes a little bit further up. Oh, man. There's a uh, Yamato. Yamato cannon on the Defiler. As elevation is just going to continue. And as these Valkyries are moving to the main here, it basically is going to be game. It's going to be impossible for... I, I very soon it's going to be impossible for Elevation to be able to acknowledge that they have any chance at all. Um, but you know what? We appreciate them sticking in for the in, sticking in it out for this long because it is much better to uh, fantasy GG and stay in the game for way longer than it, you should then leave way earlier than you should and potentially lose a game for free. Uh, Lightstorm is asking for more <laughs> trivia. And uh, Jesus Christ, that scourge just evaporated into oblivion. Um... You have to be trivia is for the start of games. Uh, end of games are for life lessons, such as you know, GGs from Elevation, GGs from Slip It Insider. Cider takes game one in a long TVZ with uh, their patented Valkyrie PV PVZ style. It is, and it is patented. I will. I basically will refer to every game where Terran goes mass Volks as like a cider, the cider style. All right, let's let's change this up. We're not in week four, Jesus. Okay, it is two fact, two furious versus four pool lifeguard. Let me correct our stream title there. Week, not four, six. All right, there we go.
we've now fixed it and uh, the blind can't yell at me anymore how long till Tastos is referring to Volks as cider style yes that's our that's our end goal <laughs> is to every time the Valkyrie is made it's like we have to we have to consider the fact that the Terran might be going cider style All right, let's load into our second game. Our, the, this is a, a real second game on Polypoid. Once again, oh Jesus Christ, I just started the replay without thinking about what kind of intro we're doing. All right, let me... Uh, wait, did I just, what is, no, wait, yes. Okay. <laughs> Top right corner, as our blue Terran, once again, we have Cider representing the blue Terran squad first time chat from viewer motherfucking oops hell yeah man it is cool to watch thanks for thanks for tuning in bottom right we have elevation as our purple zerg player representing the four pool lifeguards all right overlord scouting straight up um, alright, early game trivia, since it doesn't look like either player is doing anything crazy. We already did the Zerg attack. I could do the SCV attack, but that one's kinda... would be too obvious. True! Um... Lightswarm, we're not doing the SCV attack, it'd be too obvious. Uh, if you if you like watching this, you might also enjoy playing it. And Blind posted a link to the Coach Pupil League Discord, which is the best way to learn how to how to play StarCraft and get matched against people who probably are just as bad as you. Because um, everyone is truly, truly trash at this game. And that means that everyone also is really good. We appreciate that. Elevation going for 12 hatchery so they are you know, going to be setting that up all right here we go since here, here's our halo since uh our, our fuck <laughs> um how much base armor does a Valkyrie have? Because we can be pretty sure that we're going to be seeing Valkyries this game, so that's our trivia. And we can hold on to that for a little bit. And it gives you plenty of time to, to weigh in. Lightstorm says three base armor. Are you sure about that? That's a lot of base armor. For a... Uh, for something that isn't a capital ship. NCX following up saying three as well. Drone doing a great job of keeping uh, the command center from building, blocking the placement. Far, <laughs> saying we have 69. Fucking the funny sex number. All right, <laughs> shit, god damn it. Uh, Cider finally does get that drone killed. Gets their second base coming up. Elevation, also, you know, setting their base up as well. Looks like they're holding a lot of resources. They might be going for a really fast... Yep, there's that third hatch. Life Swarm googled a, uh, the answer, apparently, saying that it's only two armor. Uh, which, again, why would you... That's not the... We, we, we were going to see Valkyries this game. We were going to check it then. Now Life Swarm's just like, nah, let me just Google that. Probably pauses Jeopardy reruns to 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 look up the answers before the contestants give them. Yeah. Just I I don't know like there's not much to say right now. Uh, really standard. But what if Cider doesn't go Volks? Do you have? Oh my God, Lightstorm! 
Ye of little faith. Cider is going to go Volks, and it's going to be amazing, okay? So calm down. Do you see Boruto nuke every game? Not every game, but <laughs> all yeah, all the good Boruto games we see we see nukes every game. This SCV has been putting in the work. Oh my god. He is finally gonna get scared off, but. How much damage? We're gonna have to look and see how much damage that SCV actually actually did. All right. Uh, wow, actually, that's a really fast lurker aspect. I <laughs> um, so elevation kind of going for a lot of different. Mm, did he cancel lurkers? Uh oh. Uh oh. That's a lot of marines. A lot of marines that are about to have plus one, but there's enough creep colonies here. There's no medics with this army, so the marines should. Oh my god, dude, this is so smart, honestly. Like, um, running up the ramp, like past the building, sunken column. Actually, no. Okay, it was almost so smart, okay, but uh. Those two Zerglings just kind of ruined everything. It's about to be just... Because if, if that whole Marine Army was able to get up there basically for free without taking that damage, uh, they would have won the game 100%. Also, oh, Spire finished. That, uh, that SCV did about 100 damage to it. So, you know, put in the work. A lot of barracks being built, factory going up, so we are seeing the tech get produced for the Terran as our Zerg player is just kind of sitting back having a good time making their own shit uh, second extractor coming up and you see that same timing as the Mutalisks are building the missile turrets are getting put up in the Terran base so uh yeah, I mean, Cider has the solid timing here, right? Like, they are, um... They're gonna be... They're not gonna get killed by the Mutalisks. The Hydra aspect... The... Yeah, or the Lurker aspect that be restarted. Um... Which is... Interesting. It's a choice. I feel like if you're gonna get the Lurkers... Well, I guess he's he is just getting a couple of mutalisks for safety, and if they think Cider is going to go Valkyries again, then they don't need to go heavy into mutas because they the, all the mutas would just die anyways. And so we get the mutas just to be able to you know play it safe, and we get Lurker Aspect, Triple Evolution Chamber, Elevation canceled Lurkers earlier, but then restarted them. Not sure why. Um, Muta going for the scout. Another huge uh, bio push here from uh, Cider, but I think there's enough here to defend. Three, up to three sunken colonies, potentially a backup one. Now he canceled lurkers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the bio army is actually not going. Oh, this is really smart. They're coming around the edge here because uh, Elevation will see the attack coming in down the center. Unfortunately, a couple of bio units did get kind of scattered off and, and went through the center. And uh, so that tips this. The Zergling see, saw the fire bat and is like, oh, okay, there's something coming. And even though we just saw one fire bat, he knows that like there's no reason for a single fire bat to be out there by, the, by itself. And so, yeah, uh, the lurkers are going to get up in time, and that's going to make it basically impossible for uh, Cider to bust this. But, actually, never mind, there's a siege tank. So you get that siege tank up in range. 
Um, oh, oh, that sea tank is barely on the edge of the, the summon columns. Oh no! Oh no! His uh, the monkey brain. He saw the attacks come in and he dived and he really shouldn't have. He might have only seen one lurker fire, but there's actually four lurkers there. But the extra siege tank comes up, but there's no bio to reinforce it. The army is only just now getting on its way there. But again, there is no actual... Uh, yeah, all these zerglings are going to be able to get right on top of them. These tanks need to un need to unseage and retreat back to the marines or they are going to be completely surrounded. And that is exactly what's going to happen. Uh, now the bio is going to get up here and we'll be able to fight these marines and probably, you know, take these lurkers out one by one if they attack down like this. And with no sunken colonies, like, in the back to defend, there is an opportunity here, but it isn't looking, you know, it, it, there's a chance. Yeah, and Elevation doing a great job leapfrogging the Lurkers up, but uh, one of them is going to get caught right as it's burrowing in. And now with two Lurkers left, uh, the Marines will be able to kind of dive in, stim, and oh no, the, the, the scan ran out. The Marines are going to unfortunately get surrounded by the Zerglings. There's more Medics than Marines here, and the tank, oh, but there's another wave of Marines. The Medics just have to retreat so they can stay alive, but... Uh, okay, maybe this works. So the medics are alive. They can retreat back to the marines. The lurker gets fucking 360 no scope by the tank, and the marines are going to be able to dive in again. At the very least, this tank will be able to get set up here. As more, we have a lot more lurkers in production. Eight lurkers coming down. Um. We are finally getting up to that starport tech for the Terran behind this. But they're trying to keep the pressure on, right? Forcing all these lurkers out, thinning the numbers. You just have to poke the uh, the tank up a little bit, okay? Really good uh, push forward there, force the burrow. And then as these reinforcements are trickling in, uh, Cider can just keep... Oh my gosh. As all these marines rallied here and isn't, uh, isn't wrangling them forward. All right, push forward here. Scan does go down, but it, uh, then, oh no, the scan disappears just as this lurker was so close to getting taken out. What are what are our comsat stations? We have the energy for one more scan. So uh, elevation has done a great job again. These lurkers coming right on top. We need the scan there, but that tank is going to die. Yeah, cider. Elevation taking great engagements, uh, and Cider just doesn't isn't quite getting the correct timing for their scans to be able to take everything out. If we finally have science vessels in production really late in the game, uh, and those will allow them to, that'll let Cider not have to rely on those scans, which is going to be very important because like if we look at it right now, right, we have one still only one scan available. And actually, I don't think he knows about. It. I don't think he has his um. His second comp set hockey. No, he does, never mind. Uh, yep, Zerglings are going to get on top of the tank. Uh, and. Yeah. Science just, just about to be finished, and as soon as it's done, it'll rally down here to help them push. Uh, we have some questions about upgrades. Let's see. We have plus two, plus. We have plus one, plus one, with plus two, plus two on the way. Like all three on the way for our Zerg player. Well, Terran is still only on plus one, plus one, with plus two, plus two not even starting. However, we do kind of have to acknowledge that it is 32 SCVs, the 19 drones. Um, at the very least, elevation is being forced onto to stay on two bases on as a Zerg. When in this matchup, the Zerg really needs to stay one base ahead of their opponent for this to uh, be even. Especially with the Science Vessel coming out, Elevation just hasn't had the opportunity or the income to get up into that uh, third tier tech that it will need to be able to sustain itself against these, um, these Science Vessels. Yeah. I mean... Look at, I mean, looking at the army that the Terran has amassed, wow, okay. 
That was a lot of Scourge traded for a Science Vessel, but again, like, it's really about the tempo and the timing, right? Uh, we do have a Science Vessel back at home that can come and replace it, but right now, the Science Vessel isn't helping the army, and the Lurkers can kind of bait it back. Unfortunately, for our Zerg player, we do have an issue where when there's this many Marines and this many tanks, they kind of don't have to play the Zerg's game, right? Because the Zerg wants to keep, like, zoning the Terran out by by forcing these burrows and saying, you can't scan here, we're locking this area down. But yeah, this many Marines, it's impossible for the Zerg to actually come up and lock the area down because everything just dies getting there. Um, Elevation doesn't have Dark Swarm to protect their units and get them into, into position. And yeah, Terran has kind of hit that critical mass where they just have enough guns. Yep. Uh, really great push up here. Huge spines take out a ton of the Marines. Uh, the tanks are going to also get picked off. But as they get in the siege mode and begin shelling the, uh, the Zerg army, that is going to mean that all these lurkers are going to be taken out by these two tanks. And Elevation really doesn't have any income to back up on this. Uh, Zerglings are going to try to come up, but they're going to get shredded by the Marines. And I believe that was the last lurker for Elevation. A Cider just kind of is looking around, seeing what's going on. They see that the Hive is only just now starting. And, uh, yeah. Cider basically has the opportunity to just move in and, and begin shelling the base, and that is what they're going to do, moving the tanks forward. Zerglings are going to try to come up and take it. They do target fire down the tank, uh, but, I mean, there's just two more, right? You only need one tank to be able to eventually kill these sunken colonies on its own. And, uh, yeah, I think Cider is now just saying, oh, wait, I just have the armor. And it turns out, I now look like a complete fool. Because Light Swarm early in the game predicted that uh, Cider would not go Valkyries this game. I was so confident in uh, the Valkyrie play. We have some Scourge completely overshooting the Science Vessels, which now get the retreat back to the little backup squad. Um. This rally should be enough to take out this base. And with that base gone, elevation will be down to eight drones mining resources. And um, that's not enough to sustain uh, an army on. Yup. Zerg eggs do take forever to kill, but it does die, just as the Zerg when we're popping, so... Yeah! Uh, Hydra Den destroyed, and now... Uh, it just is up to Cider to push up into the main. Four Scourge? I'm gonna try to get those, uh... <laughs> well, it's one Scourge per, per Science Vessel now. It looks like that is all that uh, she wrote. As Cider is just going to be able to push up into the main here and take it out. We have a Lurker Egg morphing on the high ground. Oh, the Eraser! Ah, uh, and with that elevation, GG's leaves the game as these science vessels uh, pull the old Eraser trick. Uh, and that means that, once again, our Terran player is going to take it. Oh, wrong screen. Our Terran player is going to take it 2-0 over our four-pooling Zerg player. Well played from Cider. Again, like their TVZ is just kind of scary for a Tier 3 player. I haven't seen any of their other matchups. All I know is that like their... Gee, I like this imposter. Uh... Yeah, all I know is that Cider's, like, TVZ looks, like, Tier 2 level. Um, but, of course, they might, you know, there's still probably some kinks. They didn't take the greatest trades there. Um, you can tell that, like, their engagements are pretty kind of a little sloppy. A little bit. But our next matchup, we're finally going to be getting away from the uh, 
TVZ, instead going into the PVZ with El Pinguino versus Vint. El Pinguino for the four, four pool lifeguards and Vint for the two fact, two furious team. We're gonna hop right into it, yeah. No breaks, no rest. Let's get it. All right. In the top right corner, as the white Protoss player, the, the greatest, uh, the best race in StarCraft, Pro Programmer, or Vint as they are in the CPL website replay names. And at the bottom right corner, we have El Pinguino as the yellow Zerg, uh, representing four pool lifeguards. I think. Let me double check. No. Wait, yes, El Pinguino. Yeah, so all, dang, they really stacked their, their group of Zergs for week six. Yeah, so that makes it easy for me to remember. Uh, Pylon goes down at the natural as, um, yeah. Extremely regular game. I just want to say, can you mineral boost on this map? Is that a thing? Like if I know, I know, is it like Eclipse where you put the person on the side here and they go up and over and it's a lot faster? Crowbar wants to name the Scouting Probe. They've redeemed a uh, channel point, 440 channel points to call the Scouting Probe Simo. And I really hope that this probe is not like my scouting probes in PVZ, because if so, it is going to die a painful and embarrassing death. Um, so we can only hope that programmer uh, is better with his probes than I am. Right? Ooh, wow. Very bold, going 12 Nexus, Nexus first versus a 9 pool. Um, that is wild. And I really hope this game doesn't end in uh, 5 minutes. So Forge goes down and we're going to need to see like 3 cannon, 2 cannons go down really fast. Now, they are kind of getting lucky. Oh, El Pinguino. He even sees the, the, the Nexus first, but he already starts three drones and only two, one pair of Zerglings. Um, so, Simo may die, but they're going to get away with it. I'm fine with being the sacrificial probe that lets my fellow Protoss player get away with a 12 Nex in a ZVZ where the Zerg goes uh, 9 pool. Yeah. Uh, you don't even need to pull this many probes to defend. Like, I'm pretty sure. I, I think this is tight. I think this is tight. And I know, I know this isn't tight. Actually, you know what? This probably isn't tight because forges are insane. But yeah, no. Uh, cannon finishes. No way that pro, uh, Zerg can put the pressure onto this game. So these Zerglings will run up. Uh, these are, like, the main purpose of these Zerglings is to keep the Protoss honest now, right? is to literally just exist and make sure that uh, the Protoss isn't getting away with being exceedingly greedy, like taking a secret third or something. Um, yeah, but El Pinguino getting their third base as, um, you know, the Zerg kind of gets for free. As Programmer is building up the rest of the stuff. Ooh, really late pylon, unfortunate. So they aren't going to be able to quite throw down the uh, cybernetics core quite on time. Well, actually, they should still be able to. Um, you really you kind of want the cybernetics core to start as you um, are sending guys over to mine gas. So that'll finish. We'll see the cyber. Oh, yeah. Huh, I guess it does fit there. As uh, three probes go to mine gas. Meanwhile, back at, home, back at the Zerg base, uh, El Pinguino just getting up a third hatchery. No gas yet. 
which seems kind of weird. We're going up to four hatches. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going up to five hatcheries. Um, and then the gas. So maybe a Zerg player in chat can let me know. Do you do five hatcheries before gas for five hatch hydra? Um, because that seems a little late. Five hatch, then double gas. Okay. Then I stand corrected. Um, so we should be seeing that second extractor come down because, of course, as a Zerg player, you're going to be wanting to get uh, Hydralisks. All right. Stargate coming down. Uh, we should be seeing a Citadel of a Dune here uh, about halfway. Yeah, there we go. And then with that Citadel of a Dune, we should be seeing uh, some extra gateways come down for Programmer. One and then two. And so then when the Citadel finishes, we should see the Templar Archives immediately start. Um, yeah, really clean uh, timings here from Programmer. I like it. Uh, meanwhile, back at, back at the Zerg base, we have Hydra Den coming up, the Evolution Chamber starting. Uh, no second gas, so I think we might be a little... Uh, yeah, I think we might be going for a more Ling-heavy style, but... It could also just be a, a, a tier 3 mistake, which happens, and it's okay. Alright, cor first Corsair is going to come out, immediately going to scout. Uh, no second Corsair starting, so great moves there. Uh, usually, you don't want to get too many extra Corsairs. Yeah, you can see, okay, the second gas is finally starting, but the uh, Templar Archives is also starting as well. And you can see how, much min how many minerals El Pinguino has compared to their opponent and um yeah that's a lot of minerals that could be hydralisks but it's not because we didn't have enough gas to uh supplement it so the corsair is going to fly around basically confirm that it's hydras um protoss players basically always know that the hydra bust is coming you can kind of just assume it but the first corsair kind of helps you determine what kind of hydra attack it is um, and specifically when it's coming. Uh, you still are going to get the Templar Archives, you're still going to get Storm, but like if you scout and it's a faster one, you need to throw down the uh, more cannons earlier, essentially. Or if it's uh, like not Hydralisks, you need to build more Corsairs to get ready for the... A lot of pylons going down, actually. Programmer go supply blocked momentarily, but they are fixing that now. Um, plus one attack on the way, still no storm either. We have plus one move on the zealots, so they're going to be heading t straight towards the third. I don't think they're going to be able to get too much done, but it is a very nice timing attack here. There's no sunken colony to defend this, and zealots will actually murder hydralisks once they have speed, and if the hydras don't have their own upgrades. Um, so the zealots getting on top of the hydras are going to take them all out, and then they're going to completely murder these drones. So all of the hydras are dead, and without the hydras, the zealot AI will just clean through these drones. Following through down into the main, I don't like that. I think they really should just focus, maybe hold this ramp as they tear through most of the rest of the army. Yeah. I think setting the zealots up on the ramp is be the smartest play, just to like make sure buffer the hydras out and then just put damage on it. You might be able to get a hatcher. Um, but the zealots are going to be able to fight this off. But as the um, these hydra reinforcements will force, them. they'll 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 get all the zealots. You're trading zealots for, uh, I guess, the pressure here, so that the uh, zerg can't come and, and try to attack you immediately. Um, behind this, El Pinguino is just getting more gateways and more zealots. Still no storm started, and so that makes me a little bit worried. They're getting their third base up, which is uh, good. But again, that storm is so important for Protoss to be able to fight zerg. So. Uh, this could be really bad for them. El Pinguino getting their fourth base. So, um... Yeah, we have a lot of... A lot of stuff going on. You know. 
It's a very standard game. Oh god, the High Templar started, but there was still no storm. He's he's gonna be trying to storm later, and uh, ooh, really great catch here. The Zelts are gonna hit this base, so I think the Hydras will be able to get time to save it. But it is like again that position. Oh, and the Zealot even tries running into the main too, distracting the Hydras for a moment. Uh. Yeah, I think there was an offer. Uh, yeah. Again, it really is just about laying on the pressure and trying to keep the Zerg from playing the Zerg. Try to keep the Zerg on their side of the map, right? If the Zerg can't pressure your expansions and bases, you can feel pretty good and start scaling well. And especially, oh man. Oh, that is so close to dying. If he just rallied all these, like, six zealots, A moved onto that hatchery, that hatchery is dead, you've denied a base, and that absolutely is worth an inordinate, an inordinate amount of zealots. I kind of like the wounded zealots being solo sent into the main, because it kind of, like, uh, forces El Pinguino to, like, th keep thinking about his main, so he keeps sending his hydralis there, and then, like, Again, this hatchery is just wide open. You send five zealots down this way, you can kill it for free. Again, we have the High Templar instead, just kind of floating out on the map. We unfortunately can't see if maybe I missed the storm upgrade. But here comes the big Hydra push. Um, this High Templar is going to die for free. As is, I think, actually... Oh, he has a miss rally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gateways. Really good... God, this gateway placement is so good for um, uh, programmer. I'm gonna have to steal it on, for this on butter. So like build one right there. Okay. All right, programmer going in for the engagement. We have a lot of height to Templar, but again, where's the storm? Oh gosh, this actually is gonna look like it is going to be game over. There's the storm, yeah. Yeah, I actually think this could very well be game because of that delayed storm. Um, that is just so many Hydras. And the Zealots are not going to be able to like buffer them back enough. Hydras getting on top. taking. Oh, they're targeting. Some of them are targeting down the pylon. But the cannons will fall. The forge will fall. And it looks like El Pinguino just kind of wins, right? Like, oh man. And that it really is just because Programmer did not get Storm as soon as Templar Archives finished. Um, yeah. I mean, they were in a great position. The hatchery, the fourth hatchery was nearly denied. If they had had Storm for that fight and were able to Storm these Hydras, it would have been such a, a good game uh, for the Protoss. Uh, just because they were playing so cleanly up until that point. But yeah, Hydras on gateways down to one base you just have this massive white brick on the map that looks really funny uh yeah a uh, really great sim city here by the way this is great placement for the pylons and the cannons and everything so uh, yeah ggs el pinguino is gonna take it uh 1-0 over their protoss uh, and nemesis Let's go back to the splash screen. And uh, we'll see if they're going to be able to... Uh, I mean, this could be our third 2-0 game of the day, right? We're at three 2-0s already. So, uh, we might... This might just be this that kind of stream. Let's go ahead. Load into our... Uh, whoop, 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 whoop. All right. Load into our, our game. And in the top right corner, we have Programmer as the light pink Protoss. And in the bottom left, we have El Pinguino as the uh, slightly darker pink Zerg. Uh, flirting in the chat. Rukadu asks, Simo, what's your ladder rank? I don't remember. It's like 1300. It's bad. 
Um, I haven't played ladder in fucking probably months at this point. So, it's not good, whatever. Jesus Christ. No, God. Oh, no. I really hope this is a practice position. So, uh, doing the night, the center gates on polypoid is so risky. Like, there are perfect positions to put the gateways at, from pretty much every angle. But the problem is, if you misplace your pylon in any of them, you uh, will not be able to build the gateways. I think you have enough room to get two gateways there. Or, like, a gateway here and a gateway here. But it's... Oh... Uh, yeah, it's not good. So I think, like, um... I'm trying to remember. I think this is a good pylon spot because you gateway there gateway there this is one of the bad ones and we can even see like programmers like not able to get their second gateway up they will get the first scout on el pinguino which is really good um however it is going to be a nine pool which against one proxy gate yeah i don't know about that one that one seems a little risky El Pinguino, of course, is not scouting the center, so they will not see the gateway coming. But a uh, programmer building also back at home to kind of proxy gate into an expansion, I guess. Very interesting. the scouting probe what is this oh I guess this is a, what's your MMR why are you smart I'm 1300 trust me I'm not smurfing I am not good at this game my highest is like 1500 which I got because I uh, two gated every single game up to that point uh what are these zealots doing? I mean, they're gonna... No way. Oh my god. Alright, well, back at home, we have the forge and the gateway building. Please build the cannon. Because there's like... Oh, what? Okay. A zealot... What? What a strange... What a strange game. Okay, so we have three zealots. Uh, a lot of zerglings. We really need this. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, these these uh oh yeah, these zerglings are gonna be able to catch this zealot. We need that cannon built up. Okay, zealots running into the main. This is gonna be a wild game. Okay, cannon. That's not a cannon. That's another gateway. Um, zealot targeting down the hatchery for some reason. Three more zealots getting into the main. Uh, drones getting on top of them because drones are a really good, uh, really good, really good unit. Um, okay, two two zealots targeting down the spawning pool as the zerglings try to retreat. This is really smart. One third zealot can try to mix it up, but he's getting separated. He's going to be able to get surrounded by these zerglings unless he gets into that little corner, which is really good for him. Uh, oh gosh, that pool is so close to falling. But the zealots, they aren't, if they turned around and fought, they might have a chance. But it looks like the spawning pool might just barely get taken out as the zealot falls, which means the second spawning pool will have to be made. Unfortunately, where are the other zealots to kind of, like, really take advantage of this timing? We have so many zerglings already out, and the programmer has not been trading very well with them. Also, I'm pretty sure with this gateway here, we can't build the Nexus, I think. All right, three Zealots come down, but they do get surrounded. They are going to attack in seven drones being built because we need something to fight these. Uh, sp uh, creep Colony is coming down so that they can immediately become sunken once the spawning pool finishes. Um, but the Zealots are going to target those down. We could put, you could put two Zealots on the ramp here. if You, you can hold the ramp with those two Zealots. But instead, they're going to go dive straight into the main. The zealots are going to take out that Creep Colony. I mean, this is looking like the Protoss is in a very good position. 
but with that uh, spawning pool finishing, two Zerglings start immediately. We have two more possible Zerglings here. Programmer needs to start taking out these drones. Um, it looks like... Oh, okay. Yep, I mean... Okay, eight Zerglings in pro or 16 Zerglings in production when you read it correctly. And with that many Zerglings about to come out, you really need your uh, Zealots to be combined into a single army because these two Zealots with all these uh, drones are not, with all these Zerglings are not going to be able to take out that spawning pool. The Zealots are going to be able to find this third base where there's more uh, Zerglings coming up. But again, the Zealots, oh my gosh, Programmer unfortunately has all his Zealots targeting down buildings. I think they got a little overconfident. And so this is the issue, right? That hatchery, 400 HP. The spawning pool, 100 HP. If you group your zealots together and have them fight every building individually, uh, you would kill both of these and you wouldn't have lost all those zealots because they absolutely would be able to fight off these zerglings in that high number. We even have a backup spawning pool being built at the third. Um, and so then behind this, because all the zealots were just damaging buildings and they weren't actually fighting the zerglings that were killing them, we have a control group of Zerglings ready to run across the map and just kill uh, the entire Protoss base, and there's nothing here to defend it. Yes, yeah, see, so these Zealots, they're just charging in, trying to get this spawning pool, but again, like, it doesn't really matter. If the spawning pool dies, because we have the backup. So what was looking like a really great position for the Protoss was kind of blundered into a free win for the Zerg. This is, like, Programmer played a really nice game, and then, like, he took a pawn with his queen that was, like, right next to the opponent's queen, and they were just like, okay, let me trade that. So yep, yeah, Zerglings in the main, uh, three Zerglings can kill 12 probes easy. This cannon coming up, uh, like the probes are going to try to fight. Uh, yeah, I mean, but we just have so many Zerglings, right, flowing in. And the, that's so, and the probes are even transferring down to the natural, but the cannon's in the main, so it's, yeah, they're catching the gosh he still doesn't know about he still doesn't know about this gateway yeah I mean uh, yeah not much more to say about that this game is over that many zerglings killing your base not much you can do about it Oh, is he finally going to see the... He finally sees the gateway. GG's from both players. And El Pinguino takes another 2-0, but at least this time, uh, the four pool lifeguards can say they have a point on the board. And with only four matches this week played in their Tier 3, they have a chance to tie it up, you know? So either Two Fact Two Furious is gonna go 3-1, or Four Pool Lifeguards, Justice is gonna get the win over Tech. Uh, Techaj Tech Tech. I'm just gonna say Tech because I don't know their I'm not gonna mispronounce it horribly, even though I probably have already. Either Tech is going to the 3-0, 3-1 for 2 Fact 2 Furious, or Justice is going to tie it up and make their week 6 even. Let's hop, go ahead and hop into it. First game, of course, on Butter. On our final week 6 match for uh, 2 Fact 2 Furious versus 4 Pool Lifeguards. And we're going to end on a TVP, Tehran versus Protoss, in the top right corner for the four pool lifeguards, the uh, the honorary Zerg player, since we've they've only felt fielded Zerg 
this week in tier three, just as he gets the he can claim Zerg. These are uh, the Mech Zerg, okay? It's not a. I'm okay. I'm gonna go on a tangent real quick. I've always found it so weird that every single unit in StarCraft is called the Terran SCV, right? Like, isn't that kind of weird that like something is called the Protoss Probe when there's no other probes in the game? There's no other SCVs in the game. What a what a what a what a what a lad this probe is, by the way. But isn't it weird that they're like, oh no no no, this isn't just any probe. This is a Protoss probe. And it's like compared to what? What other probes are there? There's there is only the Protoss probe. It's so strange. I don't understand it. But we have this gas deal, which means uh NCX is saying it might help across multiple languages. Yeah, but like, when they made StarCraft, it was... Well, hold on. Actually, I don't know what, how many languages... Okay, here's your trivia. How many languages did the, the, the original StarCraft release in? Because I know they don't. They didn't have Korean, and they didn't have... Because uh, I know, remember that was a big thing, because they were like, we didn't make a Korean version. It got big in Korea. Wow. Uh... And then they, I also know uh, they didn't have a Japanese version because when Remastered came out, like literally every Protoss character just sounds like they're in JoJo. <laughs> they're from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like the Japanese, the Japanese like Protoss voices are fucking hilarious. But anyways, we have Justice. <laughs> oh, I also just noticed the name of Justice69420. Oh my god, it's the funny numbers, guys. The funny numbers. Alright. Playing for the four pool lifeguards as the blue Terran. And bottom right, we have Tech AJPU. I'm sure there's some other way to pronounce that. Playing for the two fac, two furious team as the Protoss player. Yeah. Alright, the simulator is finally gonna go down. As Justice, uh, will, I guess, start working on that. Wow, they're actually building their bunker up. Oh, I guess they did scout the two the two gate. Bezel's gonna get the SCV, start heading into the main. Um. Yeah, I mean, good. This, I think getting the bunker is smart if you aren't, uh, if you aren't confident in your Terran micro in your like bunker or in your barracks supply depot micro um but I think once tech actually like comes in here sees the bunker they go oh okay they throw down a cybernetics core because they already have the gas mining and it looks like they're going to be throwing the cybernetics core down anyways here pretty soon um yeah, right, so the, the Zealot is just going to try to, like, get around the side, but we also are, oh my god, we have up to five Marines, and so really it's going to hard, like, at a certain point, especially once you have, like, five Marines, oh, Jesus, that probe just doomed that Zealot. Like, once you get a good amount of uh, Marines, you really can't fight them with Zealots until you get speed or something like that, but there's the Cybernetics Core, we have Zealots pumping, and so then uh, we're probably going to wait until that finishes, and then we're going to switch over to Pumping Dragoons. Um, yep, Justice playing super standard, super careful. Really like to see that. They're getting their factory and their command center. So good play. Zelts are going to try to dive in, and I mean, they could get it, but yeah, that is a really bad engagement, I'm going to be real honest. But the Zelts do get on top of the Marines, are going to force them back. I mean, honestly, this is the moment, like this is the opening that Tech kind of wants. He needs to be really careful. Oh wait, what's he doing? Oh no! Okay, as a as a two gate connoisseur, I have to say this is this is very awkward. Um, cancel. Like you need it. He should have like this SCV should be dead. You can't engage into this. What are you doing, Tech? What are you doing? And now the pylon finishes. So he has like the extra supply, but it's like in his opponent's base. Like what is? The, I guess you could build a. Uh, uh, shield battery and you are baiting two marines out from fighting there but like yeah 
I'm not sure. The, the only issue is like this is a really awkward position for the pylon, right? I, I think the pylon would have been better there. So you can build the shield battery kind of in the back and it's safe. Also, Vulture comes out, so the Zealot absolutely can't do anything here. And now really it is going to come down to the Dragoons. And honestly, Dragoons do not fight Terran Marines that well until they have range. Um, and yeah, see, in the Zealot, like if the Zealot was up here with them, they can maybe do some work. But yeah, you can see the Dragoon production is kind of not, not 100%. Um, here comes the next big push. Zealot in the front to tank shots. Dragoons laying down the DPS. But again, gotta be very careful. Don't want to be taking too much. Yeah, you can see, like, they engage for a few seconds, and we already have a Dragoon at half health, right? Uh, robotics facility started. Tech is, like, going hard on the all in. So we're probably going to see a shuttle and then maybe they're going to try to hop into the main base or something like that. Because there's just like no way for um, for this to be busted right now with what they have, right? Missile turret, super smart. Um, when you have no information as the Terran, you kind of have to just... Uh, you, you have to play to what you think your opponent is going to do as part of their, like, um, as part of their outs, right? And so really common thing is like okay what does protoss do in this situation right they're either taking a natural base in which case that's in your favor because you already have your natural base or they're gonna try to do a dt cheeky cheesy build or they're gonna try to do some kind of drop build right and a missile turret deflects dts and it deflects drops all right so uh dragoons getting on top of the bunker we only have three seo no <laughs> That is more Dragoons than SCVs. The bunker is going to fall, and that means that the Dragoons are going to bust this natural. The tank does come out, but Siege Mode is a few crucial seconds away from finishing. And he's actually rallied to the front. Snatching defeat from the Jaws of Victory. Actually, no, it's more like Tech is snatch. You know what? Yeah, that wasn't really Justice's mistake, because... um. That came down to them not pulling SCVs on the bunker, um, which is like, actually, you know what? I will say that snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, because um, oh, this is also huge. Picking off that tank again. However, three factories producing like the dragoons are on top of the. I mean, the, if these SCVs were pulled to fight, it'd be one thing, um, because SCVs fight dragoons really well. But justice, funny number dot funny number leaves the game. Uh. And that is going to be it, yeah. I mean, I think they still had a chance. They would have had to pull the SCVs and take into huge critical damage, but, like, tech still hadn't expanded. Uh, you have three factories that you can produce units from. Uh, it, it would have been close. Um, yeah, all right. That is our point four. Our Protoss player. Um, yeah. So that's... That's something. It is looking like maybe a 2-Fact, two 2-Furious, two 3-0 is in the works. Alright, let's load up our second game for Polypoid. Justice versus Tech. Let's hop right into it. Man, this scoreboard layout is a real crime. I, it's rough, okay, but I didn't want to cover up the art or anything i was like okay how do i do this and so um we just have the most awkward scoreboard layout so that like all the text is in the dead space anyways in our bottom left corner playing for two fac two furious we have tech as our pro purple Protoss. And the bottom right corner as our Olive Terran playing for the four pool lifeguards. We have Justice 69 to 420, man. <laughs> trying, going to, they're going to be trying. 
to tie up the game so that we can get a game three and justice can uh again what's on the line here is this is either going to be a 3-1 win for two fact two furious or a complete tie um yeah Looks like Tech is really going to be dedicating to the more aggressive play here. Like, they have the in-base, you know, pylon gateway, scout. Uh, well, I guess we'll see if they're going for a... You know, that was, like, in time to maybe try and get the assimilator down. Uh, but because it wasn't the first scout, we instead are just going to be probably going more for standard stuff. Um, Justice, meanwhile, also doing standard stuff. Same base layout as earlier. Um... So, yeah. Alright. Let's do uh, some trivia. What is something? What is... All right, in StarCraft 1, not Brood War, StarCraft Original. Each race has, I think, one special unit type that is a, a hero, quote-unquote, hero unit. Uh... that uh you can't get you can't build it and um it has like you know special properties or whatever right uh unique model all that kind of thing so what are the three like unique units in the original starcraft before brood war that each race had there's your trivia by the way, a zealot was killed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when the zealot doesn't get there before... Also, this is a much safer opening for uh, Justice since they're getting their factory much faster. Uh, that's kind of why they're able to do that because they weren't uh, gas stolen. Uh, when you're not gas stolen, you can time your things a lot better. The zealot's going to come up, get at least one marine kill, maybe two. It's like just one as the vulture will clean it up. Okay. Yeah, crowbar. Yeah, yeah, maybe one of them. There's two more. In uh, what is the the Protoss unique unit and the Terran unique unit? I'm gonna say like they not necessarily a hero. And only for StarCraft One. That is... Alright. Trivia succeeded. <laughs> That'll be uh, 30 points for Crowbar and 60 points for Nightcat. That's true. The Terran have a Civilian and the Protoss have a Dark Templar. Um, DTs in StarCraft 1 were unique units. You couldn't, um, you couldn't build them. Civilians also are the unique Terran unit. In fact, I think even in Brood War, they're the only unit, they're the only Terran unit that you can't build. Every other Terran unit. Damn that! Oh. All right. Oh shit. Uh, would you trade one Vulture for five probes? Because that seems like a pretty good deal. Um, we were even in worker count, and then uh, we're not anymore. Also, Justice has two bases already, and, like, isn't being pressured at all. Like, Siege Mode is done. With the Missile Turret going up.
Yeah. Terran. You know what? Terran should be able to build civilians from a command center. They should be like 10 minerals or something. They still, they can't do anything. We can just like, for 10 minerals, build a little shitty unit that can go scout or something. Builds in like half the time of, a, of an SCV. Costs one supply. Make them like, a little bit faster. Yeah, meat was... <laughs> Observer is going to get into the main base, so, uh, I mean, you can tuck it in probably right here or something, and that'll be able to, you know, keep, a uh, keep a, keep an eye on the, uh, the Terran for a little bit. <clears throat> yep, there's a lot of dragoons. Well, Champion Chat points out there is a 15 worker disparity here, which, um, 16 now. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of workers, um, which, you know, happens when you don't get your second base up until around 7 minutes, 30 seconds, and your opponent does a fast expand. Or not necessarily a fast expand, like it's the regular expansion timing for Terran, but like they do it fast. <laughs> new new brood new brood war uh, caster meta. Call everything a fast something because the players because the APM is high. Like oh yeah, that's a really fast timing attack there. You can see they have 300 APM. They're doing it really fast. We are playing on the fastest time speed, so really. Alright, gateways being produced here. Going up to four gateways. Um, yep, yeah, six factories, armory. Uh, yeah, so this is really bad for Protoss, actually. So, um... The problem with this, my understanding, is Protoss should probably have more gateways than Terran have factories. I think like the rule of thumb is like mid game, like or late game, you kind of want twice as many, twice as many gateways as Terran have factories, or at least more, right? So like if they have six factories, you should be up to like nine, ten to twelve. Yeah. Um. But, depending on if our Terran player doesn't attack, we have Stargate and Citadel of the Dune on the way for our Protoss player, as well as a third base. So we could see, uh, what? Simo, you're, you have Steve, the kind of decent Terran player here. What? What? Well, th thanks for coming, I guess. I feel like I'm... I spent $20 on Steve text-to-speech a few weeks ago. Oh my god. Oh, oh, well this is... That's not good for Protoss. It's even, oh my god, thank you. <laughs> well, now I have... Now I know who I need to go follow, apparently. Once, I, once I'm done streaming. Thank you for, thank you for stopping by. 
Um, this look well, <laughs> if these five tanks, if those five tanks stay there, uh, Protoss might have a chance. Otherwise, oh no, they're moving. Never mind. Tanks are coming. Uh, we have a fleet bacon secured, so we will see in about three minutes, one carrier will be out and ready to fight. Uh, unfortunately, we already have, you know, Goliaths here. Uh, the Protoss army lost every single Zealot so that its uh, Dragoons can protect the third. Um, he actually... Wow, yeah. I actually don't think he saw the... Uh, actually, I don't know. He might have seen it with one of the other observers. Never mind. But, unfortunately, when you're, there's a situation like this, uh, Terran just kind of wins. But that does mean we will get a game three, and Justice does have a chance to tie up our group here if Tech is not able to pull around and get a win in game three. And honestly, I think if Justice just focuses on uh, defending the early aggression next game, it really does look like Justice just has a. a I mean, it looks like Justice's macro is just really good. Not really good, but for, like, it's good for their tier, and it, uh, compared to their opponent, uh, the, compared to their opponent, Tech really doesn't have, didn't have the macro for this game to keep up. Oh my god. And yeah, that's gonna be game. So, uh, they've probably played in, uh, so, no all chat here. Justice takes game two. That means we're going to move on to game three. Our first match for this group that's in game three. Let's get this set up. Let's see, since I recruited him. I'll pass that along to the, uh, to the CPL staff. Right. Oh my god. Alright. Hopping into game... Oh shit, let me... Uh, hopping into game three. Unfortunately for our Terran player. This is Eclipse, which is a two-player map. Similar to Butter. Which means that uh, if Tech is playing super cheesy... My god, first probe on the four. That's not even a good 9-9 nine -nine timing. Oh wait, no, hold on, am I just late? Okay, yeah. wait, no, yeah, this, this isn't even a good 9-9 nine -nine timing. This is the first probe of one of the four, first four. Uh, and like, yeah. I don't, this is crazy, this is weird, right? Is he just gonna go and gas steal immediately? <laughs> Hell yes! Hell yes, let's go, dude. Perfect Protoss tricks. Dude, I know we're gonna watch this from Justice's point of view. Alright, let's get into the mindset of a of a of a of one of these sad Terran players who's just like, oh, Oh boy, I'm so glad I'm gonna be able to play my um, uh, my solid macro game. I'm gonna prepare for the mac, but I know my opponent cheesed me, did went two gate on butter, so I need to be prepared for you know a two gate on this game. Okay, so I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my supply depot up, and then I'm gonna build a barracks. Okay, so we have our barracks building, and um once that barracks is done, we're gonna build. Marines. Oh, there's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no probes. Oh, I'm not gas steeled. This is a two-player map, and he didn't gas steal me. Oh, okay, he must be playing standard then, so I'm really safe. I really appreciate that. Let me go. Oh my god! Oh, what's that doing there? Oh no! Oh my god! 
I can't, oh my, the gateway. We gotta kill it. Pull the boys. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, Jesus. So those, that gateway's gonna finish. This probe is gonna, this zealot's gonna finish. Uh, and, uh, yeah. We now have two gate in the main. Uh, we probably need really need to see a bunker get thrown down right right here. Um, ooh, but we have the the SCVs pulled right. So now here's the thing, right? Is Ken Tech? Do they have the the micro? Do they have the micro to be able to pull off the successful two gate? Ooh, shield battery. You love to see it. All right, but we got to be careful about these. Oh, Zealot getting around. Zealot getting around. But they're getting caught up on the on the SCVs. But the Zealots, you know. At some point, you, I think you really just need to uh, focus down a single SCV next to Zell. Oh no! Oh no! The Marine! The Marine! All right, the shield battery finishes. That's going to give all the Zelts infinity life. Um, the Zelts are going to get on top of the SCVs now. Once you have three Zelts, that is like the magic number for killing uh, SCVs. You tear through them, right? And we do have some Marines building, but we don't have the income to get them. We also have a barracks coming up under underway, and a barracks is really good. Um, that is gonna let, you know, uh, Justice not die horribly. But the issue is, right, the Zealots just will just kill the refinery and make sure that the Terran can't build gas. If they're playing correctly, right? Also, that's five Zealots. I'm pretty sure five Zealots can kill a bunker with two Marines in it. So here's the thing, right? The barracks is not reaching it. So, Justice is stuck uh, without gas, and if Tech was playing this right, they would have been building probes up behind this, and they could have also maybe fit in an assimilator somewhere. Because really, the win condition for Tech is to keep the Terran off gas so that they can't get vultures, and then eventually getting Dragoons out. But um, we are going to YOLO into a barracks, because we are in Tier 3. Uh, and, yeah. So again, this is kind of like uh, not a great play. We do finally are rebuilding probes. We just, just build build the cybernetics core and assimilator just start them at the same time it's easy you get one dragoon out and you win the game for free because the dragoon just sits here and kills the, the command center um if you try to this is yeah i think um this is very much a tier three two gate okay you aren't you aren't you are engaging the full protoss brain right He's engaging like a human amount of brain, but there's that huge like extension. Like Protoss brains are like extremely long, and so you have to engage that back part in order to get the. Uh... What are you doing? Yeah. But again, I think the important thing to note here is that um, Justice still doesn't have any gas, right? Uh, they were coming around. We're gonna kill a supply depot, I guess. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure the Zelts could be right around here and fight the... Or, yeah, jeez. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, you know, staying alive. We just need to build a... Ugh. Please build a... Okay, we finally have the assimilator started. And then we need to do a cybernetics core <laughs> okay forge works too i'm fine with forge okay you can build fo photon cannons outrange bunkers in fact actually you know what i'm gonna revise what i just said you don't need to get a cybernetics core you just need to get a forge as soon as possible and then leapfrog cannons forward because as long as the terran doesn't have gas right Cannons melt through marines, cannons outrange bunkers. Like, yeah. We're good. Build a pylon right here. We have two probes here. That's that's an infinite amount of probe. Um Okay. Forge is up. Let's see them cannons. Alright, Marine. Ah! Oh! Justice is taking out their own command center. The Marines are revolting! Dude, these marines were sleeper agents sent by the Protoss. Holy shit. It's an insane game here. Two two extra photon cannons getting thrown down. A f an extra, a third shield battery because these ones are running out of energy. Um, that's going to finish. Recharge all the zealots. Or none of the zealots, I guess. But as soon as these cannons finish, 
the Protoss are going to take the game. That's a lot of Marines. Alright, the Marines are finally going to come up and engage. This is the do or die moment. If these cannons finish, it is going to be game over. If these cannons finish and the Terran isn't able to break out, but the cannons do finish, they're going to start laying down the, the damage. And the reinforcing Zealots from the gateways get the flank on the Marines, take them out. Foot on cannons, one-shotting Marines as all of the Marines are dead, all of the SCVs are dying, and the Protoss is in fact going to take this game. Justice, sex number, weed number, is going to lose, unfortunately, and Tech is going to take the game, securing, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, the 3-0 win, 3-1 win for Two Fact, Two Furious in a 2-1 game. All right. Um, that's this. That's our week six match. But that is not the last of the StarCraft matches because that was a very quick group, okay? We've only been streaming for two hours and ten minutes, and like ten of those minutes was me eating my breakfast waiting for, you know, to start. So, per hour schedule here. Oh shit, I didn't realize I had the chat thing enabled for this. We're gonna go back. We're gonna do saying go play ladder. I refuse. We have one more cast because I forgot the. St well, I didn't forget the stream. I slept last weekend because I was very tired. Um, so I have to catch up be on some casts that I, uh, P did win champion. So I have to catch up on some casts that, uh, we needed to do or that I reserved. So we're going to have to catch up on those. Don't worry. It will not take too long. And then maybe if I'm feeling like it, we might play ladder, except probably not. So our next, uh, cast is going to be week five with uh, of CPL with Two Fact Two Furious once again returning. I guess reverse returning since they'd be returning in week six. We're looking back on the Two Fact Two Furious origin story, and this time they're going to be facing off against Lettuce Attack, another uh, another CPL team. We're doing another week. We're hopping all over the timeline. Shit's getting weird. Alright. But, before we do that, we have been streaming for two hours, so I'm going to take a very quick break. Um, grab something to eat. And uh, be back in like, I don't know, like five minutes. Maybe. Maybe longer. We'll see. Stick around, and we'll, uh, we'll be back. Nice. It's like 87 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and I'm a Canadian, so that's intolerable. Jesus Christ. That's insane. <laughs> All right. Well, this will be back in like some amount of time, maybe, probably.